just the, I think that the perception I had was that most people weren't that bothered. Mm -hmm. uh, football was, was in a mess. We'd had the Bradford fire a year, year before. Um, Hillsborough was still to come, but there was uh, loads of sort of hooligan problems. Was, uh, grounds were falling to pieces. Um, it, it, terrible times. And also economically, there's a good parallel there because um, it's something I, I remembered when we got relegated and I, and I, and I remember mentioning it to some people that um, uh, when we were heading towards uh, liquidation in 86, uh, Woolworths moved out of Middlesbrough and uh, they, they just became a small, they went to, they stayed in Red, Red Crab I believe and stuff like that but they had two stores in Middlesbrough and it was like, it was symbolic really, Smith's Docks had shut down and then Woolworths went, you think, uh, the town's finished, you know, kind of thing. I was in real trouble. The town's in trouble. The, fo the football club's in trouble. The place is actually falling to pieces, the, the, the actual structure of the stadium. Uh, how are we ever going to get out of this? And Malcolm Arson was uh, briefly the, the, the bloke to, to, to bring some hope back and be a bit of a, like a saviour. But he, he, what did he say? He said if we do, if we can't sign Stephen Pears, who was a great keeper, then then we might as well the, the, the football club might as well be finished. And uh, people put chipped in to buy Stephen Pears, but there was never a chance. But and uh, he went because he can't really like put one player ahead of the football club. Mm -hmm. And. Um, yeah, it was it was it was uh, desperate when when Willie Madden came. I don't know what chance he had, and Willie Madden working with Jack Charlton again. Mm. Um, and and yeah, one of my fondest memories of, of watching Middlesbrough was the first time we went to Shrewsbury when, against all the odds, we, we stayed up. We beat Shrewsbury on the last game of the season to stay up, and it was phenomenal. Oh, there's that picture of all the players cheering of uh, Willie Madden, and that, that's. One of the greatest days, I think, soured by on the night when you realised there'd been the disaster at Bradford. Mm -hmm. that, that, that disaster. But that's, I suppose that's one another reason why that, that day sticks in my memory. Twelve months later, of course, we went to, to Shrewsbury. Uh, we did de defeated. It wasn't helped by the fact that it was a massive riot, and uh, riot police were called into a football game for the first ever time in, in, in Britain to quell the uh, Middlesbrough fans who were rioting. And they were smashing up like a, a tea booth in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the end. But I, I remember the only the only chance the riot police didn't have a chance. The only person that could probably have helped it was was uh, was was this sort of saintly figure in 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 like um, in like a pastel ju uh, pastel jumper walking in the middle of it. And it was Willie Wiggum. <laughs> <laughs> he was walking between the right and fans. <laughs> That was the only hope for sanity. Uh, what was he doing now? Like? Don't know. <laughs>
that, that, that are too young to have been uh, 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 are all too aware mm. of what of the, what the Riox side and and the Mowbray's captaincy meant mm. and and what it could hopefully.